Welcome to the channel guys, we are back again and today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 fragrance purchases from 2020, so stay tuned for that. And if you like fragrance related content like top 10 lists, clone comparisons, fragrance reviews, hit that subscribe button for more great content. So 2020 has been a crazy year and if anything can shine a light on the whole year, it's been a really good year for fragrances for me, for a lot of people, got to try out and got to pick up a lot of great fragrances. It's what made this list so hard to make. This is the top 10 best fragrances that I purchased in uh, 2020. And it was actually very, very hard to make. And because it was so hard to make, I actually have some honorable mentions that I'll quickly go over. But these are the absolute best of the best and really was difficult to pick them up. So first honorable mention, I'm gonna talk about Windwood just briefly. This is a Mancera that does not get talked about pretty much at all. I know I really like this one. It's a violet heavy woody fragrance. Reminds me a lot of uh, He-Man Rocky Mountain by D Squared. There is a definite similarity. I know that fragrance was discontinued. This one isn't. Very fresh smells like or reminds me of, you know, a mountain breeze or something like that. Great freshy for the, the um, for the spring and summer and it is one that is definitely different very fresh has a greenness to it and uh, i can't wait for spring summer to be wearing this one again so honorable mention there another heavy hitter coming up that actually didn't quite make the list almost made the list i think this is a great one for spring and that is sultan vetiver by ver sultan vetiver by nishane honestly this is potentially the greatest uh vetiver fragrance of all time very gentlemanly very classy, yet I feel like you can wear it most times, most any time if you really want to. Although I find spring is a really nice time to wear vetiver dominant fragrances. It has that really nice smoky vetiver that transitions into like this sort of marshy vetiver that I like to describe it as. And really does showcase really a lot of different facets of vetiver and how it can be used in a fragrance. Nice, complex, robust, and gentlemanly. Next one. By the user grove this one actually did grow on me a little bit um if you saw my review i was a little disappointed in the sense that i really was hoping this would be a lot more tart it might have been in the top 10 if it was a little bit more tart but this is one that honorable mention because i think it will be nice to wear in the spring summer um not the absolute best fragrance in the world and that's why i didn't make it in the top 10 but it is nonetheless a very refreshing very nicely done citrus fragrance and the next one I knocked this one off the list because I have another Killian, actually a couple Killians that I'll get to in a second, but this one is Musk Oud. Beautiful musk uh, with rose. It does have some slightly woody undertones, but the Oud in this one, not really uh, very prominent. It's more of a musky fragrance, but it is the ultimate in class and luxury. Honestly, if I was gonna reach for one fragrance for a very highly formal occasion from my collection, this one would probably be it. It just smells like luxury, smells like class. You know, I do sometimes wear this one casually, but ultimately it is so well suited for um, those formal occasions. And to me, this is Alberto Morialis's swan song. If you want to think about it that way, it is his best fragrance, the most well-blended, well-composed fragrance that he has and showcases every facet, I think, of his ability as a master perfumer. This is amazing stuff, and it's not one that's talked about a lot by Killian, so if you do like those musky, somewhat rosy, woody fragrances, give that one a chance, get a sample of it, and see what you think of it. So we're finally into the top 10, um, and I'm gonna start off with one that has been on my list of fragrances to buy, or was on my list of fragrances to buy for quite some time. And that fragrance is none other than Viking by Creed. This is one of those fragrances that, for me, I think it could easily be a great fall signature scent. It just has that really nice sort of barbershop vibe, but done in a very mature, classy, and modern way. It also manages to make Rose a uh, prominent figure or for a note in, this, in the mid of this fragrance. And it is nice to see a Rose fragrance that's done in a very nice, classic, masculine way. Very nice, refreshing, spicy in the opening. I do really like that. It has mint. Uh, that mint is very, very spice or very refreshing. But it has a lot of spice to go with it. It gives it this really nice, hearty backbone. Do like this one. I've seen a lot more people coming around to Viking 
I know it was not uh, greeted that well when it was first released, but a lot of people are coming around to it. I'm happy to see that because I think it is a fantastic fragrance. One of the best from Creed's uh, that's available, definitely in my top three Creed fragrances for sure. Now, number nine is Sedley 2020. Now, 2019, Sedley was released. Um, I know a lot of people did like the smell. The performance was abysmal. So this one is just so refreshing. I love the mintiness. It has this really nice sort of effervescent, bubbly, fizzy kind of a quality. And, you know, in the 2019, I would find that even if I got any longevity, it was basically a skin scent. This thing, they've almost gone too far with it. So this one, I'll go two sprays and it's just projecting beast mode off me for like four or five hours. And it does last longer than that. Definitely pushes towards that eight hour mark. And it does have a very nice woody dry down that complements the nice citrus fizzy effervescent kind of opening that it does have. And I just love it. And it's one of, um, it's definitely one of PDM's more original fragrances. Personally, this doesn't remind me of anything. There's nothing I know. I, mean, I know somebody said it at Hugo Boss bottled Infinity, uh, which I did try. And to me, it, they don't smell anything the same. Maybe there is a fragrance that this one does smell like, but personally, I haven't smelled it. So I do really like that one. And uh, probably one of the best freshies from Parfums de Marley. Next one, number seven on the list, Initio Side Effect. So this one's talked about a lot. It is a beautiful, boozy, cinnamon, sweet fragrance. I love the cinnamon in this fragrance. This one opens up a lot like a boozy orange soda, which I actually really, really love about that. I don't know if it's because for me, I used to drink spiced rum and orange uh, and orange soda mixed together, which does taste really, really good. And this really reminds me of, maybe it's the bit of the spices and the rum and the sweetness that really makes that composition for me, but absolutely great. So boozy to the point that it is, sometimes comes off feeling very watery or almost aquatic. Very sweet, very sensual, and very, very enjoyable uh, fragrance. So side effect, of course, I mean, this is probably one of the most talked about from the house and needs absolutely no introduction whatsoever. Next one on the list. I was very happy to get my hands on this one because it is a limited edition and it was a limited edition. I almost didn't get this one, but uh, Maximos was kind enough to help me get my hands on a bottle of this and that is Straight to Heaven Extreme. And this really is an extreme version of Straight to Heaven. They've managed to amplify the boozy notes and they've amplified the vanilla. So this is a sweeter, boozier version of Straight to Heaven. Now I will say the one nice thing about Straight to Heaven, I do appreciate that it's much woodier and I do really like that woody component, but this one has this really amped up booziness and sweetness that is just very sensual and yet very, I feel like because of the booziness, it does have a certain level of confidence to it. And it is one that is quite well blended and quite unique. Now it does have typically for me better performance than Straight to Heaven, although I will say um, after letting my Straight to Heaven sample that I had sit for a while, it did perform a lot better. Uh, nonetheless, great great fragrance, um, was happy to get it. This is, this is a good one for special occasions, but of course I do like to wear it just, uh, you know, when I go out, um, I think if you're doing a night out or something, this is a great fragrance too. Now, we are in the top six, actually. So this, uh, in the sixth spot, I, um, I have put another Killian fragrance and probably no surprise to anyone, and that is Angel's Share. So this was released 2020, absolutely great, um, you know, boozy gourmandy kind of a scent. I get a very boozy apple pie with this one. Um, I know somebody said something about like an apple cider and I can definitely see that because I think something about the cognac, uh, it does have a bit of an apple-ish quality to it, and it is quite boozy in the opening, so it can give that impression, I think. And of course, the presentation, as with all Killian's absolute beauty of a um, presentation here, so the bottle, uh, but it has this also very beautiful cinnamon note. Does remind me a little bit of a Wajon. Uh, fortunately for me, I guess, I'm almost out of a Wajon, so this uh, can definitely be something I use until I, or if I decide to buy another bottle but this is so masterfully done. I think one of the reasons I will be honest that this didn't place higher is this is smells so good to me for like six hours or so. 
And then deeper in the dry down, what I get is this nice creaminess, which I do like, but sometimes it gives me a little bit of a latex vibe deep in that dry down. Definitely does knock it down a few notches for me, but the first six hours, absolutely amazing. After that, it's nice, um, but it's not as good as the opening, that initial uh, burst of the cognac, the cinnamon, the sweetness. Absolutely amazing, amazing opening and mid as well. But the deep dry down, like I said, sometimes I get a hint of that latex, which I'm not a big fan of. Next on the list, another gourmand type of scent. And I was very lucky because uh, this fragrance is hard to get. And of course that is Zerjoff Italica. Now this one I managed to get actually from the Zerjoff website. Zerjoff has done or had done a release of city exclusives on the website for a short period of time. And it was actually right around April, so right around my birthday, that uh, this became available on the website. And what's even crazier, the price that they were selling it for in the North American store was cheaper than retail if I had gone to Harvey Nichols and bought this uh, retail. Now, of course, I had had a bottle previously. I mentioned this in another video um, because I was in London. I picked up a bottle. Absolutely love the fragrance, but it did have a bit of a leak. Um, you know, I managed to decant out most of it and get my money back. But it was very disappointing because the bottle had been ruined. It had stained red. The fuzz was all gooey and stuff. This one did manage to get another bottle of it when the opportunity arose. And the bottle is in perfect condition. So, uh, very happy about that. This is one of those beautiful, uh, creamy milky kind of almond biscuit fragrances that is really really good in fact i don't really know anything that smells really quite like it and it is an absolute beast mode performer exceptional longevity nice sweet beast mode thick thick sillage um, so i do really like this one it does feel a little bit more like a special occasion fragrance but because um you know i want to use my fragrances i definitely wear it other times for sure now the next one Another Gourmand. So you might notice I do love my Gourmand fragrances. This is a 2020 release, sweetly known by Kerosene. Now I do talk about Kerosene a decent amount. Um, definitely a Kerosene fan. So out of like all of the designer, or sorry, the YouTuber fragrances. So if, if you don't know, the guy, the uh, perfumer from Kerosene used to have a YouTube channel a long time ago. And uh, when he started doing his own brand, he stopped doing YouTube videos. So this one lasts absolutely forever. Total beast mode fragrance. You know, it'll easily last 12 hours on skin easily, if not longer. Uh, so this is absolute beast mode. This may be the longest lasting fragrance that I own. Absolutely love this fragrance and I love Kerosene as a brand. Um, they have a lot of really high quality, good, uh, unique fragrances. So happy to have this one in the collection. And I will probably add a few more kerosenes as well, especially because I am running low on uh, some other, uh, some of the other fragrances that I have from them. So I might uh, finish those off and order something new, who knows. Now the next one was actually a blind buy and mostly on the uh, recommendation, a subscriber had hyped this one up so much and he sent me a sample. And before I got the sample, I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna buy it. He talked about it so much, it's how great it was. And honestly, it is that good. This Naxos, this is such a beautiful, well-crafted, masterfully blended fragrance. It is just so good. It's this sort of honeyed tobacco, sweet, luxurious, warm, inviting, sensual. It's, it's really, it does everything that I want a fragrance to do. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's very, it's a charismatic fragrance in my opinion. It is... Uh, very alluring. It has this beautiful, sweet, honeyed tobacco that just speaks volumes. Now, it is a little bit linear in my opinion, but to me, that's not a problem when I love the way that it smells. So to me, again, it, fragrance doesn't have to be complex to be really, really good. Um, and in the case of Naxos, it's done so well uh, that it doesn't matter to me. You've heard probably about Naxos. If you are familiar, it does smell a little bit like Pure Havan or a lot like Pure Havan, but this is really the high class, um, well-refined version of Pure Havan. So excellent fragrance, great performance. And uh, if you can get a good price on it, I think it's absolutely uh, worth it. And I do love this presentation. Nice frosted glass, nice aesthetic design. Very, very well done fragrance. So one of my favorite Zerjoffs and definitely 
a must try from the brand. And this next one, I actually almost made this the number one, uh, the number one pick. And if you just think about single fragrances, this might be my favorite YouTuber fragrance, especially if you only include people that are YouTubing now, and that is Excel Nuit. So this one is this really thick, robust, dark tobacco fragrance that has a lot of anise uh, and does come off like a really dark black licorice in the opening. It has this very robust, very thick tobacco uh, note that, e that emerges even in the opening. It dries down into this really nice, sweet, uh, fluffy tobacco vibe. And, um, you know, a lot of people compare this to like red tobacco or Carlisle. And the one thing I'll say is that yes, sometimes this has a bit of a wet tobacco. The tobacco that you pick up is wet. And in red tobacco, in Carlisle, there is also this wet tobacco note. Uh, but to me, this does not smell anything like either one of those fragrances in the opening, in the dry down, especially not in the opening. But it's really, really well done. And I will say, somebody suggests this smells like, uh, you know, 1780 or some something like this. I, I have a sample of it. I'm going to do a full review on it. It's a Histoire's de Parfum fragrance. Also, I would say it does not smell anything like that. That fragrance that the uh, commenter mentioned, I did try it, is very patchouli heavy uh, and does not come off anything like this one. So it is a nice, nicely done, uh, and in my opinion, unique tobacco fragrance. Very, very good and would definitely fit for a full winter signature scent for somebody like me. Now, the number one fragrance, and it is a fantastic fragrance, I must say, uh, one that I absolutely love, and that's Rosé All Day. So really do enjoy this one. This is such a beautiful, this is, okay, this is the best apple pie fragrance. So there's fragrances like Angel Share, Wajon, Ambre Nargile, uh, that do have this sort of apple pie vibe. This one is the most uh, beautifully composed apple pie fragrance, if what you really want from the fragrance is that apple pie. Now, it even has a note of apple crisp, and um, you really get that off the top. It's very thick luxurious this is very gourmand smelling it does have also the addition of plum which i definitely get a little bit in the opening it has um a little bit of a rose note in the mid and it definitely has i believe for some reason i think this has patchouli or something in the dry down but it does have something that gives it a little bit more to the composition and um a little bit more dimension than just that apple pie smell but man this is so well done and it's very strong so I barely put a dent in this one, even though I've had it for a long time, because honestly, three sprays is more than enough to really do the job uh, with something that is this potent. So very, very strong, very thick, luxurious, beautiful gourmand fragrance. Um, absolutely love it. So those are my top 10 picks and a few honorable mentions. If you guys made some great picks or purchases this year, or sorry, last year, 2020, Leave a comment down below. Tell me what your best purchase was. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.